Hello fellow creatives. Today we're going to be going over what you need to know if you want to get into character design. This is going to be part one, going over the basics and the first steps that you need to know. But part two will go into the more advanced aspects of character design. Also joining me today is Sapphire. Yay! Yay! So Let's go! These are all from Max. If you know Max Pax, he does like the Procreate brushes that everyone uses. <laughs> um, Ooh, yeah. yeah, he's an illustrator, but he does character designs. And so I do love his character designs, but this is just like an idea of like how you can utilize character designs. But the idea behind this is everyone loves drawing pretty girls. It's totally fine if you want to draw pretty girls all the time and like just just have fun doing it but this is like if you want to really get in depth with a character and you're like i want to design this character with a purpose this is a character that lives in a world and i want to do more with it instead of just like a one-off illustration that you just don't think much about you know sometimes yeah. you just want to sit down and you're like i like purple hair okay let's give her pink eyes and like you don't really think about it and it just kind of happens and you're like yeah that's a nice character but like this is supposed to be a bit more in depth on like reasoning how to start making characters with more depth so yeah. i'm starting with the basics because i don't know how much you know but you have to know your seven elements of art and your seven principles of design you got to know these things to just have a grasp on art and how to use it this is the visual language of art so line shape color value form texture space those are all elements of art and then on the right balance contrast emphasis movement pattern rhythm unity those are design do you what would you say is the most important one like if you were to throw everything else out the window what do you think is most important i think it depends on your style because some people like they could make an entire painting out of just texture and then right. some people like if you do collage it could all just be pattern and if you're doing like a black and white piece contrast is super important and some people don't use lines at all. Like they just paint and it's like very soft. And some people are all about lines. Like I love line work. So for me, line is pretty important because I love to have like really smooth, perfect looking lines. Yeah, I always felt deeply about shape because it's like, even if your value is good, if like your shape is not right and people can't tell what it is, it doesn't matter how good your value is. But I think value and shape work together a lot. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So. These are the basics that everything else stands on. This is the foundation of all art. And then from here, you need to do a lot of studies with character design. It's not just about drawing humans alone. You also have to understand animals and creatures to a degree because we're all just mammals. Like even though humans hold themselves to a higher standard because we're intelligent, we're still all just animals. And so it really helps a lot to study other animals and look at their musculature because then you can see how far nature has pushed those kind of things. Plenty of times you may want to have an animal companion with your character or like have some type of creature that they have as a mount or something like that. And so it just really helps to know animals and not entirely only focus on humans. And apart from that, it also helps not just for inspiration, but just in general to know cultures and fashion and then know different eras that things are from. And like, it can be great for like making Pinterest boards and you're just trying to gather inspiration for your character where like you look into different eras and like you learn about history and like what kind of stuff people wore, their hairstyles, what kind of stuff they would have on them. It's really great to get your creative juices flowing, but it's just good in general to like study those things here and there and like brush up on certain areas. Like if you're gonna make like a Native American character, you don't wanna misappropriate things. You know right so it's just better to do that research beforehand like before you make a character don't just hop in like oh yeah i know the tropes of that general region or whatever and then like end up upsetting people <laughs> with your design that's the worst case scenario it also helps to know a bit of mechanical stuff too because as you see in the illustration here there's plenty of times where like you want the character to be interacting with something and if you don't know how to draw mechanical things if you don't understand i mean you don't have to like read guides on how engines work but <laughs> a good example that i love going to is star wars star wars yeah. constructs everything in a way that it could feasibly work but they don't all have engineering degrees but they still right know enough to make it look realistic and make it look believable and that's the important thing yeah like anytime you go to make something mechanical don't just try and remember like yeah i've seen something like that once i think it always helps to look at references and like just try and figure it out just a little bit and it'll make it that much more believable so that if anyone who remotely knows what that thing is <laughs> looks at it they won't just be like 
that doesn't look like that at all. So it always helps to use references, especially when you're in areas that you don't know much about. And then the last aspect is think about storytelling, expressions, perspective, and lighting. And these are all just things that push whatever you've done to the next level. I know sometimes you may just want to like throw down a pose and then just be like, yeah, it's a character, but it helps if you already have an intent going into it. And you're like, I want this to be a dramatic piece about two lovers and she just lost her husband. And then like, you can really play into the lighting with that. Her expression draws people in and it makes it much more memorable. If people see the expression, they can like feel the intensity on that character. That's what makes your piece stand out is those kind of elements. The story behind it is what people remember more, like they can feel the emotions. Yeah, absolutely. And I think story, again, it connects back to like, their body type and everything because that will help tell their story like what their clo what clothes they're wearing and it, those are all like pieces of it yeah we're gonna go into that soon too so we're gonna go into these a little bit more so you want to study the figure and the form and these are all really good studies from tb Choi. i love their art she's a fantastic character designer so you, you have to understand the rules of anatomy so that you can bend and break the rules in a successful and appealing way Never stop doing gestures and drawing studies. Like I had mentioned before, even like lead concept artists at Riot, at Blizzard, at all the top companies, they do gesture drawings all the time because you never stop learning. If you don't do it, it's like language. Like art is a language in its own. If you stop doing it, you'll get rusty, you'll forget. And so it's always good to brush up and keep practicing. I chose these images because they're really good at exploring the different values of figure drawing. This one, I like how they showed how they do perspective on the legs and the body by showing it as like cylinders. Like these are the landmarks that they've placed down to show this is the curve. It makes it feel like it's so much more in perspective because they understand with the landmarks how the forms are turning in space. And then this is a good one to show about how the forms of the body, how much energy there is to the pose. And so if you can capture that line of action really quickly, even if it's just a few lines, you can get so much more energy in the the pose just with a few lines yeah and like the way the skin squashes and stretches like a lot of people have equated it to being a bag of flour as reference because sometimes it sags and sometimes it squishes and just yeah. depends on where and how much and this is like what i was just talking about sometimes it's better to use really simple shapes to simplify the forms and then you really feel the energy and the motion in the pose yeah I definitely keep struggling with getting caught in between like the simplicity but also trying to make the really nice shapes or like being able to see some of that like muscle under there because sometimes I feel like when you go for something like the far right picture some people are really good at making it look nice like in this example but other people it looks kind of like amateurish if it's just like the single line do you know what I mean by that yeah that's all yeah. just down to practice <laughs> yeah and then these are pretty much what I talked about. Like it just helps to know musculature. You don't have to go super in depth into like the scientific things, but it just generally helps to do studies like these kind of muscle studies. And then this is showcasing like how the forms of the human body are normally all juxtaposition to each other, where it goes in and out on each side. And it's like a nice swoopy wave between the different forms. And that also really helps accentuate the motion in the form. I never noticed that. That's super helpful. Yeah. So like, even though you might think the form is pretty symmetrical on both sides if you make it more swoopy then you can really feel the movement a lot easier and like they explain here if you just have like a square it's all symmetrical and so it looks very flat looks very like no movement to it but as soon as you add swoops and you differentiate the curves on both sides then it really gives more impact to that energy so the next thing is studying storytelling and acting because it's not just always smiles or sad faces. But if you do studies from films, for example, or TV shows where like you could just pause on a frame and then like do a quick practice study to get their facial expression. I used to do this study all the time when I was doing character design classes where like you would just watch a show, watch something like Game of Thrones or something where they have a lot of facial close-ups and yeah. you can do it with like animated shows too, like with Disney shows, but it's not as useful. I think it's better to do it with live action movies because then you can really interpret it and stylize it as you want. Right. Like how they made it like more cartoony instead of super realistic, but they also push the expressions further so that you, you get that storytelling moment between them and it really helps. Yeah, it really helps to sell the story. If you have more variation 
in the expressions, then like you can get the depth of all these different emotions. Like instead of just happy and sad, it helps to like think of what does jealousy look like? Or like, what does pain yeah. look like? Like think of the more intricate emotions and try and convey those. It helps to do these kind of studies that are on movie or TV characters because you can get those kind of the subtle emotions and try and play them up and see how much you can push those. Yeah. Absolutely. Even, yeah, seeing the practice acting is so cool because like you said, they push it further and it's so interesting to see how much like liveliness almost the cartoon version has because it just pushes it to such an extreme. I love that. That's so beautiful. Yeah. And then next we have studying fashion is another thing. I'm sure that your characters will be clothed. So... <laughs> It's important to not just think about like fashion as in runway fashion. You want to look at like streetwear, like think about different eras. If your character's from medieval times, you know, there's different eras that you'll want to study more than others because like maybe you'll never have any use for, I don't know, feudal Japan. But it doesn't hurt to have different knowledge of all these different cultures that you can implement because even if a character wasn't in feudal Japan, like what if they grew up in a fantasy medieval world where they use the same kind of armor because they had access to the same kind of metals. There's all these different eras that bring so many interesting things. And if you can pull from a huge variety of eras, then you'll have a huge variety of character designs and clothing that you can pull from. And you can take inspiration from the smallest things. Like here's another one by TB Choi. They did this really awesome fantasy armor and it was just inspired by like a few little accessories, like little metal bits. That's so cool. I love that yeah i think too like it's so cool because those are those little things that make your specific storytelling and like designs interesting is like what do you look at in an accessory that you really like and how could you base like a character and arm design off of that it's so cool yeah and you can do that with like almost any object pretty much yeah make a whole character design around it if you wanted to right that's so cool so for fashion and clothing i do a similar thing where like i do a pinterest board or a Trello board. I normally do Pinterest boards for more generalized things. Like if I'm studying a certain era, I'll make a Pinterest board for that entire era. But then if I'm doing a certain character that's within that era, I'll make a Trello board that has all my characters. And then I'll have one card on that Trello board that's just dedicated to that character and like the main inspirational influences that I use for the references in that one card. So in general, it's good to have references gathered for different eras and stuff if you're really interested in a certain era. And then just do studies of clothes like this, where like you just study the folds, you study how the clothes are on the body based on like how baggy they are. It's one of those things you could do endless studies of pretty much. Yeah, absolutely. That's why I love art so much too. It never ends. You're just like, there's always <laughs> something you need to do. Yeah. And then I also wanted to mention studying animals. And these are mostly all Tara Whitlatch because she's just like considered the queen of all creature designs. She's amazing. She did like Star Wars creatures, figuring out how dinosaurs looked like. You don't have to get this in depth with it, like studying the skeleton and the musculature, but it does really help to study animals and understand how they move and like not just be like, okay, I have to draw a dog and then just like go from your memory. Like try to always use references whenever you draw animals and try to do some studies because it'll help you push your features of human anatomy if you understand more like what is possible, how far can you push these kind of shapes and yeah. forms. It's just also a palette cleanser sometimes too. Like sometimes you might get really frustrated with doing humans and that's partly because we know so well how humans look. And so if you mess up just a tiny bit, you're like, that's wrong. What am I doing? <laughs> but like drawing animals is like, it's freeing in a way because you don't have those kinds of reservations where you look at it and you're like, oh, that face could never exist like that. We are so judgmental about human faces looking perfect and pretty all the time. but. I think it's really important to like not just always draw the same facial structure. I know that there's like the standardized beautiful Disney look that we all like looking at, but it does really help to be able to push your art if you can draw all different kinds of faces and like really exaggerate the nose, make the lips crooked. It all adds personality and depth to the character. So with everything too, like all the different areas, how do you know like which areas you should be spending like more time in? Uh, studying and what you should be working on. It's great to be well-rounded and study all these things, but I think the most important one to start with is anatomy. I'll provide some resources here that you can study from. And then second, I would say facial expressions. 
then fashion and culture and then eras are important to know as well because there's so many areas you can just rotate between like today i feel like drawing some animals today i feel like doing some facial expressions today i feel like doing lighting and then every once in a while you'll come upon a piece where you're like i want to do a character that has the sun in the palm of her hand and then you're like oh geez i don't know lighting and then you just need to like spend a few days just like doing lighting studies and like remembering how that works to make it look believable yeah that totally makes sense if you want to learn more art tips check out part two as well as my other videos and remember to like and subscribe